The 1992 film The Mighty Ducks is one of those child-centric sports films that shapes and molds a generation. Much like how the Karate Kid embodied new sports of the 80s, The Mighty Ducks etched the impressionable minds of young millennials. A ragtag group of kids came together as a team, they worked hard, and against the odds, they became champions. And it was all made possible by their coach and mentor, Gordon Bombay, an unemployed convicted drunk driver. Okay, I'm taking you down the precinct. Breath, blood, or urine. No thanks, I'm full. <laughs> he and the other cadre of mentally unhinged adults in this film create a rather unsafe environment for children. Finish him off, you got it? I'm Jim Hoos, and this is The Worst Film Ever. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Mighty Ducks, and I'm going to be discussing the disturbing and downright frightening way how children and adults are consumed by the world of Pee Wee Hockey. I, like you, am well aware that this is a movie for children, so the goal of this video is not to nitpick how a single mother that works at a small diner can afford such a nice two-bedroom apartment, or how the goalie clearly remains in between the puck and the net, so this is definitely not a goal. I won't even try and talk about how this film tries to make Peter look like a tough guy by always having him wear a leather jacket, and even when outside and everyone else has an actual winter hat on, Peter wears a leather baseball cap. I'm not talking about any of that. The main topic I want to discuss is the Norma Bates-like obsession adults, namely Coach Riley, Mr. Ducksworth, Gordon, and Hans, have towards Pee Wee Hockey. And let's get started with Gordon. The film literally opens up with Coach Riley telling Gordon how important his penalty shot is at the state finals. You're not just letting me down, you're letting your whole team down too. And while it is unfortunate that he missed the shot, it was only a penalty shot and not the end of the game. I get a penalty shot. Go in, I triple dig, I fake the goalie right out of his pads. Puck's headed in, and then clang. Oh. Hits the post, we lost in overtime. We lost in overtime. We lost in overtime. We lost in overtime. But Gordon did quit playing hockey. You scored 198 goals in that season, Gordon. It's a shame you quit. It was the worst time of my life. My dad died that year. So you know, it is justifiable that a literal child stops wanting to play peewee sports at the ripe old age of 10. 20 years later and Gordon goes on to become a successful lawyer. Next time do your job, Frankie boy. 30 and 0, I remain undefeated. Gordon also moved on from his days playing hockey. Mr. Talbert dropped off a couple of rinkside seats for tonight's North Stars game. Hockey? <laughs> Forget it. But even a successful lawyer has to pay the consequences when they do wrong. The charges against Mr. Bombay are driving under the influence, driving with an open container, and reckless endangerment. Granted, Gordon didn't really get to pay the consequences for his actions. I've talked to Judge Weathers, and he has agreed to suspend the disposition of your case. Under what conditions? Probation, suspension of your driver's license, and 500 hours of community service. And a leave of absence from the firm. Seeing as how the film takes place in Minnesota, it only makes sense that the justice system deems it fair for children to be left in the care of a criminal, as that criminal is in the process of repaying their debt to society. I'm Gordon Bombay. I'm the new coach. Justice in Minnesota is a little hit or miss. In fact, Minnesota's criminal justice system and your mom are tied neck and neck with the amount of unarmed black men they fuck. This is what I gave up my overtime pay for. We'll be covering more of Gordon as we discuss the rest of the sociopaths involved in the world of Pee Wee Hockey, but before that, it is worth noting two things about Gordon. The first is that he gives up his job over the team. Gordon, I'm going to make this simple. Are you prepared to lose your job over some kids? Some game? Let me ask you, sir to fire me over some kids, some game. Collect your personal belongings, Gordon. And also, after 20 years away from the game, and having not played in middle school, high school, or college, Gordon Bombay thinks he can just walk on and play in the minors. I must be crazy to try out with the minors. I'm gonna be going up against kids half my age. So if you wonder why millennials claim about wanting things handed to them, just remember that the sports icon of their generation just showed up to play pro hockey in his 30s. Now is the time to talk about the John Wayne Gacy of Pee Wee Hockey, Mr. Coach Riley, after this break. Guys, the time has come. Stop letting your banana and berries blow in the wind. We live in a society where a good chunk of people and children don't want to see that. So you should try pants, pants. They'll hide your dick.
From the makers of pants comes pants for women. Where is that horrible smell coming from? Well, it isn't coming from Megan because she is wearing pants. Pants for women, they trap in odor. In the beginning of the film, we see Coach Riley as just a coach of a peewee hockey team. Fast forward 20 years and he recognizes Gordon from behind while not having seen him since he was 10. Gordon? Gordon Bombay. Coach Riley. Come back to see your old coach, huh? There's a special type of crazy to think someone is just popping in to see their coach after not seeing them for 20 years, but things get a little weirder. Coaching, Peewee, District 5 team. No kidding. You, uh, how about this, huh? Whoever thought we'd be coaching against each other? To be blunt, no one would thought that. Why would anyone ever devote a single brain cell's worth of thoughting to two people coaching Peewee hockey teams against each other? The scary thing about all of this is that all evidence points to Coach Riley being a professional peewee hockey coach. He coaches in 1992, he coached Gordon's final season in 1973, and he coached Gordon for a few years before that. For six years, I taught you how to skate, I taught you how to score, I taught you how to go for the W. This is a man consumed by peewee hockey. Listen to how he describes Adam Banks. Oh, I got a kid named Banks, Michael, all the way. Not quite as good as you were, but he wants it more. Kid won't give up. Now let's unpack that. After already recognizing Gordon from behind, 20 years after not seeing him since he was a boy, he remembers Gordon's stats well enough to compare them to a current Pee Wee hockey player, and then compares their respective desires in winning. Not quite as good as you were, but he wants it more. Kid won't give up. We aren't even done yet with Coach Riley, but to drive home the point of how out of touch this man is, the only way he knows how to insult a young and extremely successful lawyer is in terms of peewee hockey. You could have been one of the greats! And now look at yourself. You're not even a has-been. You're a never was. Ha 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 ha, what a fuck bullshit insult. You're such a loser, you never got to be a pro athlete. By the way, I'm the king of Twin City peewee hockey for ages 8 to 12 so I know what I'm talking about. Before we finish up talking about Coach Riley, we have to take a quick detour to talk about Mr. Ducksworth. In the beginning, it seemed like Mr. Ducksworth was one of the good guys. Gordon, you need a break. You're too wrapped up in your work. Son, my work is my life. That's just my point. The community service will do you good. He even puts a pretty penny towards the team. Well, sir, fair play doesn't come cheap. How much are we talking about? $15,000. Think of the goodwill. We name the team after the firm. Suddenly, we're the good guys. Ducksworth, Saver and Gross. The firm that gives back to the community. Come on, get you your own jersey. But then there's a fiasco about Adam Banks being on the wrong team. Uh, are you this boy's father? Uh, 450 North Hennepin Avenue, is that your address? Yes. Well, then I'm afraid there's no mistake. This boy is playing for the wrong team. What? So like all rational adults when involving Pee Wee Hockey, lawyers get involved. Gordon, you know Coach Riley and Mr. Banks. So here we are in the middle of a workday. We have two lawyers, Mr. Banks stepping away from his job, and Coach Riley taking a break from sniffing used adolescent jockstraps while gratifying himself all to talk about Adam Banks and what team he's going to play for. You see, my son Adam wants to play for the Hawks. His older brother was a Hawk. All of his little friends are Hawks. Now we already know that Mr. Ducksworth, a partner at the law firm, is going to fire his superstar up-and-coming lawyer for not letting Adam Banks play for the Hawks. But let's talk about Riley. It's a tradition. Now you understand that, Gordon. You played. For some obscure reason, Riley thinks an only child who stopped playing sports at 10 years old is going to respect something as stupid as the tradition of what peewee hockey team someone plays for. And of course we can't overlook how Gordon, before he gets fired, goes on a long-winded rant about the importance of belonging to a team as he is justifying pulling Adam Banks away from his friends to play with kids he doesn't even know. And I may not have learned everything yet, but I remember something my father said to me. Team isn't a bunch of kids out to win. Team is something you belong to, something you feel, something you have to earn. After this short break, we're going to talk about the Kevin Spacey of peewee hockey, Hans. Do you ever have one of those days where nothing goes right and everyone is mad at you? But when you step in the door and your dog is just happy to see you? Then you need a good dog. Don't settle for some lazy beast that loves you unconditionally. 
Man's best friend should hold you accountable and lift you up, not condone your inadequacies. Good dogs, you deal with their crap, they don't deal with yours. Hans, the owner of the local hockey supply store, doesn't even hide being a level 10 creeper. Gordon? How did you know? Through the back door at this time of night, just like you used to. You'd spend hours watching me do this. All right, nothing odd there. A 10-year-old boy walks unsupervised at night to watch a guy grind skates. He just remembers stats about Gordon's playing from 20 years prior. You scored 198 goals in that season, Gordon. And he just happens to have, find, and keep this in an easy to locate place. I found this not long ago. He was proud of you. Like I get it. I get that this is a kid's film. But why does Hans have that picture? Why do he spend the time and money to frame it? And why did he keep it? Like I am just honestly baffled about how so many people can remember Gordon Bombay from when he was a kid. My track coach was my neighbor and my math teacher. He even walked in on me fingering his wife. And still to this day when I go visit my mom and see him outside, he gives me that look in his eyes like, I know you, but I just can't remember you. But somehow Gordon Bombay got etched in the minds of every man in the 1970s when it came to peewee hockey in the Twin Cities. And that is our lesson for the day. Adults who are involved in children's sports and do not have some sort of relation with any of the kids playing are clearly deranged. This is how kids get molested, folks. Thanks for watching this first video of the worst film ever. Next film will be about The Matrix, followed by The Karate Kid. I'm going to do a few more films, and then I'm going to plow through the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Iron Man to the present day. Please like, share, and subscribe. And before we sign off, I spent a lot of this video talking about what's wrong with the film, but here is everything that's right about it. Isn't that right?